Listen, I, I see Abraham in this thing. He's looking for a city. And, and here's what I wrote down. To, it, just, it was so real to me. Abraham was looking for something on the outside that he could see with vision of something on the inside. How many of you know you've got to be able to see the vision that God's put in you before you'll ever see what's going on on the outside of you? Hello? Because if you don't have vision, you perish. Abram had faith. If you don't see on the outside what you see on the inside, then just keep walking. And if you keep walking, you'll hear this. It's just around the corner. Keep walking. It's over the next hill. Or maybe it's through the next valley. Yeah. Joel 3, 14, multitude, multitudes. Double, double, multitude, 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 multitude. Double, multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. You say, well, I'm walking, but there's a lot of shadows in this valley. Well, they're like David said. Yea, though I walk, Psalm 23, through the valley of the shadow of death. I love it. He kept walking. Winston Churchill said, if, you're, if you feel like you're in hell, keep going. Don't camp. Don't hang out. You say, well, I'm telling you, I'm going through hell. Well, just keep going. Next time somebody murmurs that out to you, says, boy, that day has been, I just feel like I'm going through hell. You say, well, hallelujah. At least you're going through it. Come on. I love it. Mm. Remember Genesis twenty two eleven, 11? Abram, Abram, get ready to offer Isaac. The first time God speaks. Listen to this now. This is close to where I'm landing. The first time God speaks is the call of obedience. The second time is the call of blessing. Go to 22. Go to twenty two eleven. Put it on the board. 22.11, Genesis 22.11. If you look at it, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abram, Abram, Abraham. And he answered, here am I. And then he said, do not lay a hand on the lad or do, him any, do anything to him. For now I know that you fear and revere God since you have not held back from me or begrudging me, giving me my son, your only son. Then Abram looked up and glanced around, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket in his horns, by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for the burnt offering as an ascending sacrifice instead of his son. And so Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. Hallelujah. Amen. God is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. And it said to this day, oh, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Verse 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abram from heaven a second time. The first time he calls is for obedience. The second time he's coming to bring you blessing. Look at verse 17. In blessing, he said, because you did what I told you to do the first time, I'm going to bless you, and in multiplying, I'll multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens and the sand of the seashore, and your seed and air will possess the gates of his enemies. Oh, I, I got a little inside word here for you. You ready? This is why backsliders struggle. Some of you here, you're backsliders. And because you're backslidden, you got to understand a backslider runs from the first call. Hello? Hello? First time you get called in on your issue and you got to obey, hello, mark it down, people that have been called up on their disobedience. I could name those people. As soon as you call them up on their rebellion or their disobedience, they can't handle it so they run. And yet the second time God called was to bring blessing. And they, I've had people come in this church, prophets, and say, I have a word for that brother. And you remember the brother? And they'll describe them to me, and I'll say, they don't go here anymore. And they'll say, oh, no. I got a word. God spoke to me. I had Archbishop tell me, 
archbishop had a word for somebody. He said, the, the prophet I brought in has a word for this. Where are they at? And I said, well, they don't go anymore. They got mad. They left. And archbishop said, they left. They missed God. first time God calls, he calls you to obedience. Yes. The second time God calls, he calls you to bring your blessing. Mm -hmm. Wow. You here today? Yes. What's coming in 2020 is the fulfillment of all your obedience mm -hmm. in the first time that God spoke to you. Mm -hmm. Now, 2020, 5780, he's opening his mouth and his prophets to bless you with all of your expectancies. Mm -hmm. Look at this scripture. Judges 16, 28. Samson prayed one more time. What was it I asked you to say that you couldn't say? How many of you say, Lord, I'm going to be like Samson. I'm going to wait. When God yells out of heaven, I'm going to stand still because i got to obey him because behind it, he's going to speak the second time. And I don't want to miss the blessing that's coming. Mm. Samson prayed one more time. Judges 6.39, Gideon asked for one more time. But I love what verse 34 there of chapter 6 says. Judges chapter 6, verse 34. The Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with himself and, and took possession of him. You wonder why Gideon was awesome? The Bible says that the Holy Ghost came and put him, his garment around him and then <clears throat> took possession of him. Father, possess your people. Oh, God, possess your people today that they'll stop living on the outside edges of running away and run into God and let God give them the next word for blessing. Oh, I had opportunities to run, saints, but I'm so glad I didn't run. I had opportunities to run or to go and to go and to go and seek my own thing so many times. But God told me to stay. And when I stayed, blessing came. The places that they offered me to go, the places that people offered, most of them are not even open. Genesis 18, 32. 1832. Abraham said, let me speak one more time. And I'm done. Hebrews 12, this is it. Put it on the board. I saved this for the last. This is that little slice of pumpkin pie with that, that whipped cream sliding all over it because it's so hot. It's just you can't keep it on there. It's just dripping on this side and then this side. You're chasing it around with your spoon. He said, Lord, I can taste that. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? Look at it with me now. This is really going to help you. Hebrews chapter 12. Can you say, Lord, show it to me. Let me see it, Lord. So, See to it that you do not reject him or refuse to listen and take heed to him who is speaking to you now. <laughs> do you hear anybody talking? I, I think the only person you hear is me, right? Mm, okay. Just a thought. For if they, the Israelites, do not escape, did not escape, when they refused to listen and heed him, who warned and divinely instructed them here on earth, revealing with heavenly warnings, mm -hmm. heavenly callings from God, yes. his will, how much less shall we escape if we reject and turn our backs on him, who cautions and admonishes us from heaven? I do 
don't know how far heaven is. I do know there's three of them. But can you imagine today that all the way wherever heaven is, God chose to speak right here at this time. Then, at Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he has given a promise. Oh, his voice is going to shake the earth in 2020. The mouth of God is going to open up again. And this time, it shook the earth once. It's going to shake the earth again. And then it'll shake everything that can be shaken. But now he has given a promise. Remember, it's a covenant. Yet once more I will shake and make tremble not only the earth but also the starry heavens. Can you hear this? Yes. Now this expression, yet once more. Now this expression what? Oh, say it out loud for me today. Once yet once more indicates the final removal of and transformation of all that can be shaken. That is, of that which has been created in order that that cannot be shaken may remain and continue. God is calling from heaven. And 2020, we are going to be able to declare that what God has said he has declared it a second time. And as it comes out of his mouth to his real prophets, it's going to shake the planet. It's going to shake India. It's going to shake nations. How many of you were here watch night service a few years ago when I told you the number one enemy that would be the enemy of Israel and America would be Turkey? Anybody? Your hand? How many of you know... I spoke that to you back then and there was nothing going on. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this video sharpens and encourages you to be all that God has called you to be. You can give online at rockcitychurch.com or on the Rock City Church app. Like and share us on social media at RockCC Baltimore. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode or live stream.